Disclaimer, all thoughts and opinions shared in this video are my own, and I mean no harm to anyone mentioned in this video. I am only commenting on the information I have seen and researched myself. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before we get into today's topics, um, there's just a few quick things that I want to mention and get out of the way. So first, for today's ailment, my ear hurts, hurt the last two days. I hope I'm not getting an ear infection, and if I am, I have to go to the doctors and get some medicine, and I just really am not trying to do that right now. I got some eardrops. Hopefully that takes care of it. If not, I am going to be in a lot of pain here coming up, and I'm not looking forward to that. Second, I want to apologize actually for something that I said as a blanket kind of statement in my last video, and it was in reference when Shane was talking about the beauty community and he said how they're all toxic and all of that stuff and I said yeah like we all been knew that the community beauty is toxic and I kind of wanted to correct that a little bit because even when I said it I felt a little weird saying it and then watching other videos come out since uh, it's not the entire beauty community that is toxic it's just a few select people and it's the people that Shane chooses to be around I just wanted to kind of apologize for that if I did offend anyone by that statement I myself felt weird saying it so I just wanted to kind of clear the air on that and third I want to say a huge thank you to everyone so I actually reached over a hundred subscribers which I know is like not that big of a deal I'm just really happy to kind of share this content with people and that people like it honestly the fact that like one person wants to sit here and watch me and listen to me talk about these things is honestly amazing. I am just so so thankful and I hope to continue to bring you more content that you enjoy in the future and anything that you do want me to cover or you want to see or you want me to talk about just let me know in the comments down below and I will be more than happy to do that. And with that all being said before we get into the video again make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, link is down below in the description as well as Instagram link also down below in the description and subscribe if you not have not already I would love for you to join the family over here and share this video to your friends and family so they can join us here as well and see what this is all about and what we're talking about. That's all I have to say. Let's get into today's topic. So all the topics kind of today flow into each other a little bit. They're all very semi-connected um, through kind of different strings. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is James Charles speaking out on Twitter. So on Monday, James Charles tweeted out, sexual assault is really serious and it's absolutely disgusting that making false allegations is becoming a trend right now. All it does is invalidate actual victims when they are when they feel ready to come forward. And then he replied to his own tweet saying victims deserve to be heard and should never be invalidated. But it's insane that anonymous newly made accounts are popping up with stories and people are just believing it with no proof at all. I am not defending anyone but there are always two sides to every story. These tweets obviously are in relation to Jeffree Star insinuating and basically downright saying that James Charles is a and a danger to society. James has refuted these claims and he's been very open about how hard the last year was for him after the Bicester scandal, so it's kind of understandable why he tweeted these things. And I have to agree on some level that people who do make false allegations of sexual assault and sexual crimes do make it a lot harder for victims to come forward. As someone who has been sexually assaulted themselves, I was very ashamed to tell anyone and I didn't tell anyone for almost a full year after the event happened. So this topic is very sensitive and if Jeffrey does have proof in favor of these allegations, then he should have gone to the police. Um, just point blank period. That's what he should have done. I've spoken before and said that there's two reasons why Jeffree Star has not come forward. The first is because the victim is not ready to and does not want that kind of information out there. And the second is because he really doesn't have anything. And at this point, Jeffrey is kind of dangling this like a piece of carrot in front of his audience, in front of us, in front of the world. Honestly, really sickening. And if all these people like Shane and Tati um, know this information about James and they didn't come forward as well like to the police or something like that then they are just as guilty in my opinion. James has also been liking some kind of shady tweets directed towards um, mainly Jeffrey and Shane over the last few days. He is probably feeling very vindicated in all of this. While I don't agree with how James was treated last year, obviously it got really, really ugly. I think he just needs to move on from this. As you know, I'm not on anyone's side. I'm not like defending James Charles or anything like that, but I think for him, and his own personal mental health based on what we know, he just needs to move away from the situation. Kind of just leave it behind, which is weird to say because if this is true, then obviously he needs to own up to it, but it's it's just such 
a muddled and murky situation that is really hard to kind of pick through and dissect. It's just gotten really, really complicated, I would say. With that being said, I think he has grown and matured a lot as a person in the last year. And it's almost like he was 19 and, you know, he did what all people do at that age. And that is grow up or was it the slice of humble pie that Shane Dawson decided to serve him? Hmm. I guess we'll never really know, huh? And kind of related, I'm briefly going to touch on Tati being super cryptic on Twitter. So she has tweeted a few things, mainly song lyrics over the last couple of days. And I'll have the screenshots on this side of the screen so that way you can read them and see them for yourselves. I'm not going to go ahead and read them because like I said, they're lyric videos kind of that she has tweeted and I said in my last video that Tati just needs to come forward and publicly address this whole situation. What was the level of involvement that Jeffrey and Shane had in the Bi Sister scandal and the drama get into? Shane admitted already that he knew about the video so like we know that and I think Tati owes it to us and I think she owns it to James Charles as well. Was she hurt? Yes but it's proven that some things she said in the video have been maybe not the whole truth and it was her video really that did all of this and whether she was pushed to make it or not we deserve to know in my opinion just what was going on and how exactly it got so so ugly so so fast all right like i said that was super quick so moving on to the third topic um jeffree star and shane dawson continue to fall on all of their social media is released it seems like jeffree and shane are finally starting to take a hit which i said in either my last video or the video before that I didn't think this was going to happen and I'm kind of happy to be proven wrong in the situation. Both have been losing subs which never happens to either of them. I'll put up this is a screenshot of Shane's Social Blade which is a website that tracks things like your views and subscribers um, for YouTube and so as you can see he's lost 200,000 subscribers in about a week and Social Blade and YouTube always rounds up or down, so we're not going to see another change in this until he loses another 100,000 subs, if that ever does happen. And the same with Jeffrey. So I'll put Jeffrey's up, Jeffrey's Social Blade. Um, and as you can see, it looks a lot like Shane's in losing subscribers. But Jeffrey has also been unfollowed by a lot of people on social media, and most notably is Morgan Adams, who is in the beauty community, in the beauty world. Um, but kind of most importantly in this situation is that she is the sister of Ryland Adams, who is the fiance of Shane Dawson. So there's a lot of unfollowing and refollowing going on at this very moment. She could be refollowing him, did unfollow each other completely at one point. There's a lot of companies and people that have been unfollowing Jeffree Star, which I really think this might be finally his downfall. Not even what Jeffree has done. Like that is not necessarily what is causing him to lose all of this, to lose his empire basically. It's the way he's decided to handle it and that is that he basically is not handling it. He's just gonna let it go and you know there's that kind of classic saying that any scandal is a good scandal and if you just lay low for a while then the scandal will go away and I feel like that's what Jeffrey is trying to do but I honestly don't know if that is gonna happen. But let's be real, is Jeffrey, gonna, Jeffrey Star gonna lose his platform completely over the next few months? I don't think so. I think he'll always be around, but I think this is going to kind of, it is going to be a big hit to him and I don't think he will be at the same level for a long time. There's definitely a possibility that he, you know, goes down, loses a lot of stuff and then something else comes up like it always does and people kind of forget about Jeffree Star for a while and then he starts to grow again. You know, that's always a possibility and we just don't know. As I said before, I don't like Jeffree Star. I don't think he's a good person. I think he does bad things. I am ready for him to be kind of done. But of course, he is going off on social media a lot. He is a prolific tweet it and delete it kind of person. He tweets something and then deletes it a little bit later. He never lets anything stay up for a while. I think in a way is him basically saying like, I addressed it, look, I addressed this, but then it really not staying around on the internet for a while. But you know, people always screenshot, so there's everything out there. So I'm gonna read you these tweets that he did end up deleting. And I just think this is hypocrisy at its Finest with our Mr. Jeffrey Star. The first tweet says, My coping mechanism for past trauma sometimes makes more problems for me and the people around me. Don't let anyone ever tell you it's too late to get help. 
mental health is more important than anything on the planet. And before I continue on, I just want to also say that Jeffrey is really pushing this like mental health narrative that people just want to see him fall and they don't care and that they are just attacking him for the sake of attacking him when that's not true based on this next reply. Look, so it says, so getting millions of fans to hate on a 19 year old that almost leads to was a coping mechanism for you? Valid. Jeffrey did do that. We can't deny that he did that. He went after James really hard and basically gave permission to his fans that are like a ravenous cult. It's weird to just go and attack James Charles. And once again, James Charles is not innocent in the situation, but he did not deserve what happened to him. And that is just a fact. But then Jeffrey goes on and replies and says, if that's the fake narrative you want to believe, great. Move on and worry about your own your life and actions. Mine are not your problem. So I don't know what else I can say about this man that has not already been said other than his actions are just gross and he clearly is never going to take accountability or change for anything that he's done in his past. But it seems like Shane is getting a lot more of the blowback in this situation. That's because Jeffrey has really linked him and Shane together like you never hear Jeffrey say me it's always Shane and I me and Shane Shane and Jeffrey and it's it's really weird but I think Shane is getting a lot of the blowback because people have this idea that Shane is this really nice guy where like we have the lowest of expectations of Jeffrey that like I'm not even sure if the expectations exist anymore for Jeffree Star yeah it's it's just kind of weird people still feel like Shane is this good person and Full disclosure, I used to be a fan and used to watch Shane Dawson back in like 2012 to like 2015, which discovering YouTubers to watch. He was one of the ones that I watched, but even back then, I thought he was really creepy and made jokes that were just way like over the line. And now there's just more stuff coming out and Shane is allegedly deleting or at least privating a lot of these old videos that could be deemed super problematic. But Sanders Kennedy actually did a great, great video yesterday and I'll leave that linked above for you to watch it. But just be forewarned, watching that video and hearing the things in the video are really gross. Um, the video clips or the audio clips within the video are from Shane's podcast, Shane and Friends. It handles very dark topics and it's honestly just super disturbing and was really sickening to listen to. So if you do decide to go watch that video and listen to those audio clips, be forewarned that that is what you are getting into you and Sanders does issue a warning before the start of the video as well. That's all I'm going to say on Jeffrey and Shane today because I'm sure something else is going to happen in a few days and I will speak about them again in my next video. I'm just over them and and whatever. So I just want to dive into our next big story and that is Jenna Marbles leaving YouTube. So Jenna posted an 11 minute video yesterday titled A Message. And I think a lot of people were shocked and saddened, hiatus, uh, kind of an indefinite hiatus. You know, I remember my brother showing me one of her earliest videos before, like, I ever made a YouTube account, and I just really thought she was funny. Even before I ever made, like, a YouTube account, I made my official account in 2013. I didn't start posting until many years later, but, like, I had that account since 2013 where, like, I would subscribe to people and stuff like that, and I made... The account for her. Before I ever did that, it was like part of my Thursday night routine that I would go and watch her newest video, just like logging onto YouTube and searching Jenna Marbles and looking for her newest video. I just thought, you know, 2020 has been like so awful to so many people and like this is just another thing. And I know that sounds really dramatic, um, but for someone that I idolized, she is one of my idols and someone that I looked up to is the girl that made a 40 minute apology video for buying the wrong fish tank on accident when she was instructed to buy this fish tank and it was the most sincere video on the planet and with this video Jenna does exactly what people want from Shane and Jeffrey and that is own up to your past mistakes you know and say you're sorry and just really mean it and see why they're wrong and this is things that people like Shane and Jeffrey and Tati and Gabby Hanna and Trisha Paytas like they they just won't do it and can't do it well they have not owned up to their past mistakes they have not said sorry and they have not meant it they've said sorry they've owned up to their past mistakes but not in a meaningful 
true, true way. It's not my job to say how Jenna did on this apology. I, I, I said I think she truly meant it. I'm not in any of the groups that she was apologizing to. Like, I, I am not a black man. I'm not an Asian man. Um, I am gay, but I'm not transgendered or someone who has struggled with their gender identity in the past. So it is not my job or responsibility to say thank you for the apology and that we accept because it's not my apology to accept. And I think that's something that a lot of people have to come to terms with, especially Jenna fans. I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter saying, we love you, Jenna. We love you. We accept. But like a lot of them, it's not their apology to accept. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before I kind of say that I think this has brought up an interesting conversation in the fact that Jenna is one of the kindest and just most sincere people on this platform and I think we can all agree that she has grown as a person and she's not the same girl who was living in Boston who started uploading videos in 2010 but people are gonna hold you accountable for your actions and I think that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes because I sensed since the beginning of this year that something has been off with Jenna um, it just seems like she wasn't getting the joy that she used to get from making videos. I don't know if anyone has gotten that vibe other than me, but I truly hope that she is okay and takes the time that she needs to get better. Hopefully comes back, but you know, that break that she's taking, maybe it does end up being forever and she never comes back on the Jenna Marbles channel. And that's just something that, you know, we're going to have to accept because it's what she decides is best for her and as a fan of her, I'm gonna support her decisions. Jenna's quitting has also brought up a lot of talk about cancel culture and people of saying, are you happy now cancel culture? Like you got Jenna to quit YouTube, you bullied Jenna off YouTube and I don't support cancel culture. I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think we should have cancel culture. I think you should let people make mistakes and grow. I don't necessarily support cancel culture, but I don't know if this is cancel culture fully. Um, I think this is people were just sending angry messages to Jenna about the fact that she was friends with Shane and at least followed Jeffrey, I think liked his makeup. I don't know the exact in and outs of their relationship. She should have acknowledged her past behaviors and apologized for what she did for sure, but I don't think she deserves to be in, lumped into the same category as Shane and Jeffrey. I, I don't see them in the same sphere at all because as I've already said, Jenna owned her actions, took accountability for what she did and clip where she was on the Kardashians or something like that. It was some kind of little show and she answered this question about white privilege and I think that truly shows her knowledge on the world and just the way she thinks about the world and how she understands the fact that white privilege exists and that she highly, highly benefited from that. And that's something that Shane and Jeffrey will never and can never do. And so people putting them in the same category is really just disheartening to see because it's clearly not the case in my eyes, in my opinion. Maybe people will see things differently, but I truly think that Jenna is just a better more well-rounded, more fully-fledged person than Shane and Jeffrey. And this whole situation has caused me to look at myself and just issue a formal apology that if I have ever done anything to offend anyone that like I truly am sorry because like Jenna said it really hits home that like I don't want to be putting hate out in the world and some of you may say like why are you doing these videos then? And it's because I just want my best to try to educate people and give my thoughts on how people can do better. That's kind of my whole thing is I just want to be better. I want to do better. I want other people to do better. I want this world to be a happy, nice place to live. And this year has not been a nice, happy place to live. And that is due to a lot of other circumstances, but also the fact that people are just not respecting of other people. Like Jenna said, we all are human. We all make mistakes. I'm sure I've made mistakes in the past and I, I do, I want to atone and make those mistakes better. And you can, and you can change your mind about topics, you know, just because I say one thing in one video and then oh, a few months later or a couple years later I say another thing, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm contradicting myself. I think that's just like a sign of growth in people and the fact that you kind of change your mindset. Obviously the situation is very like hit or miss. Like with Shane, he contradicted himself a lot throughout that statement, but like changing your mind about really important sensitive topics. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but you know, a long time ago in eighth grade, I was, it was like 2012, 
I had to do this project in English class where we had two sides of an argument and we had to either be for or against. And oh my god, this is so embarrassing and so cringy. I um, got abortion. I was very anti-abortion. I didn't think that you should do it. I didn't think it was a good thing. I uh, fought tooth and nail. And looking back at that and just remembering that I did that and that people sat in that classroom and listened to me is sickening to me because that is not how I feel at all now after I've learned and grown up and just started to see the world in a different way. And I recently, a couple of years ago in college, found the flash drive in which I had that project on and I I could not even look at the project. It made me so sick and I was so disgusted by it. I'm going to kind of stop there and just kind of ask you guys what you think of this whole situation of all of these kind of situations tied together because I think they are all interlinked and tied together in some way or another through these people's actions and through the actions of fans, you know? Yeah, these four, these main players and James Charles, Tati, Jeffrey, Shane, now Jenna, yeah, it's them. There's also millions of people surrounding these people that are just as loud and sometimes louder than these creators. So I just want to ask you what you think of the whole situation and just have a good chat down in the comments below about anything that I really said in this video. As I said before, please like and subscribe if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, share this video to continue the discussion with more people. And once again, make sure you're following me on Twitter link down below and Instagram link also down below in the description. That's all I really have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really really enjoy making these videos and just getting to talk about these kinds of things going on in the world with you guys. So thank you. I will have a new video soon and I will talk to you then. Bye!